All right, here is just another quick video. I wanted to cover the ChatGPT user interface with you. Now, this is really no big science, but still, I thought it would be useful to cover. Obviously, here, this is the main window, right down here, though there are always just some conversation starters where ChatGPT wants to help you. Maybe you are new to ChatGPT or just want to get some brainstorming going. What you do is here, you type in your prompt, you hit the enter button, and then you're going to get a reply. A lot of enter prompt right now. I will just use the inspiration to give you uh, an image or to show you, right? Just imagine this is the prompt I entered. And now ChatGPT will do its work and give me some ideas with its output. If you ever see that your output is not in any way what you want, then you could also stop the creation here. And then you could just type in your next prompt. This is the upload button. You can upload a data file or an image, but this is just for ChatGPT Plus. So if you want to analyze an image, I'll use it as an input for image generation. You would click here and then upload an image. What else do we have? This is important up here. Again, assuming you have ChatGPT Plus, you can switch between the GPT 3.5 model, which is less powerful, or GPT 4, which is a more powerful model, and includes, like it says here, down the uh, browsing the live web and analyzing deep tower images. Uh, the only time, I guess, that it will ever change this is if maybe if you're such a heavy user that you have run into the limit of the 14 messages in three hours with GPT-4. Other than that, I would always recommend you to use GPT-4 because you will just get better output, less hallucination, better writing. Um, now, there's also plugins. Again, also just a little for GPT Plus users, but the plugins haven't really taken off. And nowadays, you would probably just use a custom GPT in the GPT store. But plugins were a feature in early 2023 that gave ChatGPT some additional functions or capabilities. Here on the left, you have the navigation bar. So if I click here, I can create a new chat. This is, those are actually some of the uh, custom GPTs I have created for myself. If I click here, I have the full list of my GPTs. If I could then explore GPTs, I will. Let's just click here. This is who basically here I can go to the GPT store and search for public GPTs or see what is popular right now, what I'm suggested by OpenAI. This is then, of course, down here is on the chat history. And you can just click on one chat and you're back in the conversation that you've had earlier. You can also, by the way, share if you want to uh, share a link to a chat conversation so other people can read it, just be careful with this. But if you want to do that, maybe also to collaborate with friends on it, you can quick share. And then the link will be pasted into the, um, into the clipboard. Also, if you want to, you can click rename and rename the conversation, which can be useful if you want to find the conversation maybe still weeks from now. All right, down here, this is if you, it's kind of an enterprise function in case you want to do that, could be useful for you, maybe not. And here, if we click here, we have some more capabilities. If you click on my plan, you can check your subscription. Here, you can go to your own GPTs that you have created, or you can create your own GPTs. If you click on custom instructions, you can give some custom instructions, which it's just additional information for ChatGPT to know uh, the kind of outputs you usually want. So if you always want a specific tone, like casual style or a formal tone or a conversational style, then you can just uh, click on this and brief ChatGPT, and it will stick to these instructions in all of its prompts. This is the most useful, interesting, and probably you can click on settings and beta. Now, if you have a free account, you may not see some of the options that I have here, but basically you can change your settings if you want a certain color theme, right? If you start a lot of time with JetGPT, maybe you prefer to have your own theme. 
the themes are just light and dark. Expand code output, I would just leave this. Honestly, I would just leave all of them, but maybe you want to change something. Beta features, this, if you have a free account and you change to plus, you might have to activate this so that you can also play around with the features. But right now, this is just plugins because the rest like TPT store are all activated by default. Data controls, um, this is also important. Basically, here you can decide whether or not you want your chat conversations to also be used by ChatGPT for training its models. Um, shared links, can you share links to ChatGPT conversation or not? Do you want to export your data? Which can be useful if you want to know all the data ChatGPT already has about you and all the chat conversations you've had. If you ever really wanted to close your account and delete it, you can go here, but I want to do why you would ever want to do that. And the Billa profile, this is if you also want to create your own custom GPTs and publish them in the GPT store, then you can place your settings here, like your name, a domain, and other information that will be, like it says here, publicly shared about your GPT. All right, that's that. And that is the user interface. Uh, one thing, if you are on the four GPTs, also here you can go to your GPTs and here you can click and create your old custom GPTs, but we will talk about this in another video.